All right, Revelation Wellness, Fram, Fram, Framly. I was going to say friends and family, Framly. This is a fun one today because it is a friend and you are my family. Ashley Stoller and I are going to have a conversation today, a really honest conversation because we started having this conversation behind the scenes, just offline and something that we use around the ministry called Voxer. It's like a walkie talkie thing. And I started asking her something um, that we're going to talk about today. So I'll unpack that in a second, but Ashley Stoller, welcome to the podcast. Hey, I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. It's weird, huh? It's like, Hey, well, okay. It is. All right, so let's forget that. Let's just put the fact, just forget it. We're no longer on a podcast. Okay. That's over. Whatever that is. Uh, let's go back to, um, let me set up, let me set up the context of how that boxer conversation started. I was on the set of a media place uh, where I was behind the scenes and I was there to talk about the book. And a gentleman came up to me right before I was about to go on to set and do my little thing, uh, interview with the, the hosts. And he said to me, he comes up, he goes, Hey, you're the body girl, right? No, you're the fitness girl. I'm like, Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah I'm the, okay. Which is always funny because I'm more than the fitness girl. You are more than the fitness girl, like we, but it's what people know us for at Revelation Wellness. So, okay. So I was bracing myself to like, what was he going to ask the questions? Cause it was, I know the minute we start talking about fitness and this was in a Christian context, because I was on the set of a place that is, um, a Christian uh, perspective. And he said, I want to show you something. I said, sure. And so he reaches into his phone and he pulls out a picture of him and his wife. Uh, and they were much, much bigger. Like I knew it was him, but he was a bigger size. And then his wife was next to him. He said, that's my wife. And then he swiped his finger to the left. And there was a picture of him and his wife again, currently and different size. Clearly they had, they had lost visual weight off their body. And you could tell he was really excited about it and wanted to kind of share and maybe, you know, be proud of that for a second. I was like, wow. Okay. So what was the change? What happened? What was, what made the change? He goes, well, uh, my wife and I are health coaches. I said, okay. So then my next question was what, what kind of coaching, what is it about? Or what do you do your methodology or philosophy? And then he said a product that I was familiar with out in the world, a, a, a system, a way of engaging with food that I'm that I knew is out there. And I also knew it's something that you Ashley had a time that you were using as well to help. And it was very, that was it pretty much the conversation I was about to go on set. And I just said, man, I'm really happy for you. And he goes, yeah, this is like generational stuff. He did show me a picture of his entire family. So this is my mom. This is my dad. He did say his wake up call was he knew that if him and his wife didn't do something about it, he would be like his mom and dad who can barely climb a flight of stairs. They need wheelchairs to go to like Disneyland or they just yeah. can't get around. So that was, that's really the why, right? That was yeah. really his like, that's what I'm going to do. And then he found this process or system to help him out. So my question, I went to Ashley. I was like, Ashley, how do I maneuver in these waters? Because Ashley is a fitness teacher, gospel preacher, revelation wellness instructor. She knows all the philosophy and the freedom yeah. and everything. But then this has also been something that she has walked through with different pro programs or guidelines to kind of right. help. So yeah. we kind of went, we said, let's have this really like honest conversation. Cause for me, my bend is I haven't struggled with having excess weight, this isn't a generational thing. My family is generally for the most part, you know, they have bad habits, but it's not right. generational fighting uh, excess weight or obesity. And I said, let's have an honest conversation because we want to help the listener out who you want to grab onto something, but you also feel like, should I, or shouldn't I, how do I do this and stay free? Am I not going right. to be free if I'm doing this? So that's what we're going to have a conversation about today. And then, but before we go there, why don't you tell a little bit of your story? Kind of, I just kind of give an outline. You want to put yeah. some color to it. Go ahead. 
Yeah. So, um, most of my adult life, I have struggled with, um, being overweight or obese and, um, uh, body image issues. A lot of that stemmed from when I was in middle school and kids are mean, like they say things and, you know, we, over time, it just chips away at you and you start to believe the lie that your body's not good. Um, and into my adult life, as I, um, I, I was seeking out health and wellness, um, because I wanted to be a mom, I wanted to be a mom. And I knew that my body, um, I was, I was young, early twenties, and I was struggling just in regular daily activities. And so that mm -hmm. was like the, the flag that was going off was like, something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I need to get more aware of what is actually happening in me, um, in my body. But at that time it was a lot more superficial, uh, you know, getting to a certain size and looking a certain way, um, building my confidence in that way. Um, but then when I wanted to become a mom, it became about something a lot deeper. Yeah. Um, and through that journey of wanting to become a mother, I struggled with hating my body for not doing what it was created to do. Now, and what so is that? To be, to birth children, mm -hmm. to be a mother, um, to create and so when my body was revolting against me in that through several miscarriages, several losses, a lot of infertility and secondary infertility issues, the stem of my body issues, I can say, come from those places of my body not doing the things that it was supposed to be doing. Mm. Um. But I, you know, through, through a lot of the practices and the community of Revelation Wellness and the discipleship of Revelation Wellness, um, I was able to work through those hard times um, and, and have people around me that would speak truth into me, Yeah, uh, but also sit with me in the yeah. really hard places of like, I don't understand why this is happening. Um, and so aside from it being a, a superficial and I don't mean that in a bad way, a superficial, like, I just want to be a certain size. It was a deeper rooted yeah. issue in me of my body isn't operating the way that God designed it to. Hmm. And, um, through that came a lot of shame. Hmm. A lot, I carried a lot of shame of, I should be able to do this. I should be able to have a baby. I should be able to be a mom. You know, hmm. the things that you tell yourself that you should yeah. be able to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, it creates a lot of pressure and it creates this, like I said, this shame that you carry and you don't even realize that you're doing it like in the, in that time. Um, but I, I have been a part of revelation wellness for about eight years yeah. and you are platoon. Um, what, what platoon, platoon number? Shout 12, out. platoon hey. 12. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were considerably smaller than, but, um, it's just been amazing to see God bring more people into this community and, um, just the freedom that has come from it. But I remember, um, when I was seeking out, um, just good health practices, I found this was before I was an instructor. I went to a Zumba class. I had tried to go to several group fitness classes and actually, um, when you go into a fitness class, and you're larger, it's intimidating. It is intimidating yeah. and you don't feel like you belong. Yeah. Um, and whether it be certain looks that you get or uh, like, that's so real. It's so real. Yeah, I get um, it. I get it. But I look at you and I'm like, Ashley, you were made to move. You I'm light too. up as soon as you start going. I don't, I don't even, I mean, that's, but I know I just But it's want so the enemy. Move. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. so the right. enemy that he would want to take that away. Hey, man. You know, that's so the enemy. Um, but I remember going into this Zumba class and I love to dance. I've always loved to dance, but I, I stopped for a long time just because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. So I went to this Zumba class and I hid out behind like the sound booth. It was dark, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I can get my workout on back here, you know, all of that. And, um, it, but what would happen in those classes 
I couldn't explain. I, I would come home crying. Like I, during the cool down, like I would be such a mess. And I was going through a lot of mental and emotional issues at the time because of what was happening in my body. Um, Ah. and Nick would be Ah. like, why, why are you coming home crying? Nick is my (laughs) husband. And I couldn't really explain it. I was like, I don't know, but I knew, I knew God was working in me in that, but I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't know how to put words to it. But, um, that is how I was introduced to revelation wellness because those two Zumba instructors became me and Katrina shout out. So they, um, introduced me to the ministry. And since then I have just continued to pursue wholeness in Christ when it comes to this whole body issue, this whole Mm. body thing. Mm. Um, and gosh, is it a roller coaster? <laughs> uh, it is, right. Okay, so now let me, I'll take it from here just a little bit and then I'll pass it back to you. You're a Revelation Wellness instructor. You're just in the community doing the thing, Revel TV, we're going hard after life. And then life changes, which happens, and you got called to a new season in your life to go mm-hmm. help your husband in a new community plant. Is it planting a church or come alongside with the church? No, we're just coming alongside. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you're doing that and we're still blessed. Like you're doing your revelation wellness. And then, um, and then it, uh, tell us about the time that you come upon the tool that was the same tool that this gentleman behind the scenes was talking to me about. And I was like, okay, let's, let's go through these waters. So maybe enter into that moment of something being a tool. Yeah. So I've used many tools throughout my life when it comes to the health and wellness industry, Mm -hmm. many tools. Um, and there were seasons where those tools were totally just mastering me. Um, and it, it's like, I, I, I believed that like, I wasn't good enough because I couldn't follow the program, you know, to a T or, you know, or I, I would always fail, um, the program. And that was before I, I knew this, before I had the understanding and the revelation that, that God wanted, to be involved in those decisions. Like he wanted to be involved. Um, and he wanted to be a part of the conversation. And I, that was in a time where I would just, I compartmentalized things Mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and as I grew and, and God, as God would have it, he would reveal more to me. And then I realized, ah, he wants to be a part of this. Like he wants Mm -hmm. to be in relationship with me in this. Mm -hmm. It, this isn't, uh, just about my body and then my spiritual life over here. He wants it all integrated. So good. Um, and so in the last five years of being um, here in this new community um, and helping my husband in ministry and, and things like that, um, I did, I, my body has changed so much, <laughs> it's changed so much and bearing children and um, lots of life stuff, you know, Um, and I wanted to, um, explore discipline a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and I want to say this as a person who struggles, like if your bend is neglect, if your bend is Mm -hmm. to, when something doesn't go the way that it should, you want to go run a comfort with food and, and and then you go, you get mindless about it. And it just becomes this like vice. If you're someone who struggles with that. When you start operating in discipline, Mm. and this isn't a discipline that is like a shame on you, you know, like this is a truly, like you're seeking the Lord. You want disciplined in this. You want to honor him with your choices because it matters. Yeah. Uh, You, you don't want, you don't want to grieve him. You know, you, you want to seek him wholeheartedly. And so if that means that the road gets a little bit more narrow for you and you begin to practice that discipline and, and you're doing the thing like, and Mm -hmm. celebrate it, be proud of Mm -hmm. that. Like, because that as Mm -hmm. me, my bend is neglect and it has been for years. Um, Mm -hmm. and so these tools that we use, um, I, I came upon this tool because I wanted I, I, I desired to seek a little bit more discipline structure, also structure. Yes. And I also knew too, that physically in my body, I wanted to move better. I wanted to feel better, sleep better, f- have more energy to chase my kids. Like all the, thi- all of those things, 
Um, and, um, that is what drew me to having more tools. Okay. Yeah. And let's keep going. You, you go on this guideline, like you, you start to follow a more narrow road, which Mm -hmm. it it makes sense. Everyone, I just want to say, think about it, um, that there are some guardrails to help yeah. if we, if you are, and I'm, I'm saying this, this is where we get to have whatever, you're not going to hold anything wrong against me, whatever mm-hmm. I say. And if I you correct me, if you hear this differently and want to say it differently, but there is, we all have these places of growth that we need because discipline is for children, right? Mm-hmm. And if a child needs discipline, you put guardrails up, you put bumpers around things they could fall and hit their head on. You lock the door yep. so that they don't drink the poison. Like there's certain amounts yes. so that they can grow into understanding of the safety. So there's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. discipline having a narrow moment where we say, I'm not doing this. And it does produce something because what happened during that time? What were your results? I felt awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to be real with you. I felt mm. so good. And here was the other piece that was surprising to me. I didn't feel like I was constantly thinking about food. Yeah. I didn't feel like it was a constant, like once I had gotten into this rhythm, mm. I actually felt really good. My body did release physical weight. Um, I was sleeping better. I, I did. I had more energy. I felt really good. Yeah. Um, and so in that, and seeking uh, for me, Oh, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. In that, just in that, in that, um, seeking the Lord in, in those places that, that felt like such a reward <laughs> that felt like such a reward for, um, for being able to walk that narrow path and, and be disciplined but, but it wasn't a discipline out of like, I have to do this. It, it really truly for me, it was this discipline place of like, I, I get to function more wholeheartedly mm-hmm. and, um, with my family and, and just even in my own body, I get to function more wholeheartedly and I'm not so hyper-focused and concerned about the food or now, it, can we... the food controlling me. Mm-hmm. Can this is where. I begin to take issue a little bit. I'm just my own perspective of any program that begins to outsource your choosing. Cause I think that is the program you went on. It was one where they tell you what to eat. Mm-hmm. It makes it simple. Here's what you're going to have. Yes. Here's they box it there. It's ready for you. Or is it, bo- there's recipes yep. maybe. So if there so are it recipes just, it, too. It, yeah. it, and, and we all know right now, as I'm talking about this, there is a, a weight loss drug out there right now, which it literally is the magic bullet. Like I go, oh, we have arrived. There's a, there's a magic bullet. It happened. I never mm-hmm. thought I'd see one. I'm going to do a podcast on that everyone. So hang tight. I know you want me to talk about it, but it, and what the result of that magic bullet are people saying the food noise has gone away. Like, I don't yeah. hear the food noise, but you literally went through the same structure in a way of, because someone else was telling you what to eat in a way it was the food noise goes away. I'm not thinking about it yeah. some more. Would yeah. you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would actually. <laughs> and that's, you know, to hear you saying, to hear you say it like that, um, the noise, that's exactly what it felt like was just this food noise, right? Like. I, I didn't have to think so much about, okay, uh, I know this is so many calories or I know this is so much mm-hmm. fat or so much, I didn't have to do all the calculating and it was basically calculated for me. And, mm-hmm. um, and I want to say this too, in that season, um, those guardrails that we were talking about, like how, you know, the bumpers that you put in for a child, like, I felt like I needed that for a minute yeah. because I, I was so overwhelmed with all of the information. And we talk about this a lot too, just the diet culture, all of the information is that is out there. Eggs are good. Eggs are bad. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, you know, what do you want me to eat? I can't eat this. I can't eat that. So this was like refreshing. Someone's just telling me and, and, and there's proven results that I'm going to get to show me a picture. It's possible. Gosh, it's so crazy. It's so cool. How our soul and mind's desire and go, okay, I want that. Take away the noise. 
don't make me have to think about this so much. Mm -hmm. And it, it reaps a reward. I mean, it it did. Okay. So then let's keep going because Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, Ashley is okay. And, and hear me revelation wellness. I have this theory of whatever makes you grow in Christ likeness, please go do that. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. And I think because revelation wellness was now had kind of recentered you, like it all leads to Jesus. It all leads to how does this lead me to Jesus? Yes. Can I, and I think that's the big question of this show is, or this conversation is how do we use or have a tool and be helpful and still be free? That's yeah. what, that was our big, you and I went back and forth. Like, what does yeah. it mean? What does it have mean? a tool and be free? Yeah. So keep going maybe with that be, and, and then mm-hmm. consider the journey you've been on. Yeah. So how do we stay free and still use tools? Um, the, the one thing that God revealed to me in that time when I was using that tool was that I did have a lot of tools at, at, I could use any of the tools. I was free to do those things. Um, you know, after seeking the Lord, I was, yeah, you can do that. You can use that as a tool, but the moment that the tool starts to use you, Come on. Like, that is, that is where we get into some really like rocky territory, um, and so I, I'm going to just share a little bit more of, of my yeah, experience. Fine. So we ended up, um, expecting our fourth baby, which is a miracle. Um, and after, uh, experiencing I've, I've had, um, eight miscarriages. Okay. So this is a huge part of my story. Um, and I, I did experience a miscarriage in 2020 and, um, that brought up a lot of stuff in me. Uh, a lot of grief and a lot of past pain that, you know, you think you deal with, but then it, and grief, it, it just works in waves and it, it's not yeah. all just done. And, um, and so that would bring stuff up for me. Um, and in 2020, we, we did have a miscarriage and that was when that, that kind of like sparked that I need to take care of myself again, you know, like that, mm-hmm. because that was what, that was the thing way back that that, um, motivated me to want to change my body so that my body could function the way that I thought it was supposed to function. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, we end up getting pregnant with our fourth baby and I have him, we experienced some of the most stressful life stuff within Mm -hmm. this two year span of time. (laughs) And I'm talking our home, um, our jobs, our, our family, like everything. And plus I'm very pregnant at this point in time. I'm in my third trimester and all of this stuff is just crumbling down. Um, and at that point I, I wasn't following any program. I was, I was going to say wanting to can you say context prior to this baby, yes. you were on this plan. Yes. And yes. everything was going great. Like everything was, was fine. It, and then any moment when in that plan that the tool was starting to use you in that season, I, I can honestly say not, not so much. Okay. I, and- I felt, I, I felt like I felt good in laying it down, um, and really pursuing just a holistic nutrition for my body as I was growing a child. And, um, I had, okay. So gotten, you did lay down the tools. I did to kind of transition to yes. focusing on the baby. Yes. Okay. So I decided after, you know, like I said, lots of life stuff, lots of stress, mm-hmm. um, just ongoing constant. Mm-hmm. Um, we had moved into our, our new home and we weren't even in there for a full week. We weren't even really moved in when I went into labor. And so, um, then after that, it's just thing after thing just kept happening and happening. And after we had our baby, um, where I'm in a new home, I'm in a new environment. I've got boxes lined up on my walls. Um, I am really just trying to navigate through, uh, having four children and just so mm-hmm. many things. And one of the things that I have struggled with, um, in each of my pregnancies is postpartum depression. And so I thought I knew I could feel it. I I could feel it coming. And I spoke with my doctor and I I, um, reached out for help. And, um, but then I thought to myself, you know, if I just get my nutrition, right, that's going to help a lot. So I'm going to get back on this 
this program. Hmm. And this is where the spiral starts of um, hmm. the tool mastering me. Hmm. Whenever, and I'm going to get emotional about this. When the tool takes your affections, it turns your heart towards it instead of God. Hmm. When you find yourself um, just grappling at everything you can to get what it is that you want, and you you then turn your gaze away from the Lord, yeah, this is when the tool starts mastering you. Amen. And the these are the Amen. cycles that I experienced in that season. And I, and I'm going to be just real transparent. I am still in it. Yeah. Um, I am still very much in it. And there are days that I wake up and I think, okay, I'm going to eat this way. I know I'll do this. I'm going to mark all my, check all my boxes off. I'm going to do this. And then I get, you know, to the end of the day and I'm hungry and I'm angry and I'm like, what is the point? You know, like I'm still very much in the very middle of this. I have experienced such tangible healing and, and goodness from the Lord. And I, I still have, I, my watch is talking to me, <laughs> <laughs> but I still, uh, have these areas in my life that I still need healing in. I still need the father's presence in. And so, yeah, this is where, this is where, um, I have been in this cycle of trying to use something and it controlling me and mastering me. So would you say that the, cause just we'll be honest, like you put weight back on, right? Yes, you went down when you were on plant and following the, that's why when this gentleman showed me the picture, I was like, I'm so excited for you. And how will you do this for the, I didn't ask the question, but in my heart is how will you do this for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Is this sustainable for the rest of your life? That's mm -hmm. always a question. Not to say there isn't a time that the guardrails right. need to come in, but in Christ, when we die to ourselves, then life opens up again. Like it, it yeah. should open. He's not here to squeeze everything out of you in your life. Right. Miserable. The actual Amen. discipline is to grow us into a broader place. And yeah. that to me is if for, for you, you, you were doing fine, but then the, the baby, um, situation, changes things. <laughs> yeah. Changes everything. So yeah. why not just go back on plan? Well, and I did, and I tried and I tried and I tried and tried again. And that's when it was mastering you. Yep. Yeah. And that crazy. Yeah. So I just want to say to that y'all. That's why Revelation Wallace, uh, plans are good. God is great. Like that's something yes. Anjanette says that in the, in the ministry, um, plans are good. Like there's nothing good, but God is great. Mm -hmm. So when the thing is not leading you into the depths of God's heart, then yeah. he's shut it down for whatever reason. Yeah. I think I just want to warn people or I'm warned for my own self that there is not one plan that will work for the rest of your life. It just goes back to, it, it fails. 97% of all plans of diets or anything we do to try and change our body, especially if it's a body size or mm -hmm. um, even though that wasn't your beginning, your beginning was just, I want to start healing my body, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. But that's a, yeah. that's a beautiful place to begin. But when it starts to go into something's wrong with my body, the shame of yes. my body, our heart motive, our heart posture, and isn't that always what God's going after? Yes. Yes. He was never, let me say this. He's always been after my heart. He has never once said to me, Ashley, the way you look you're not going to be able to effectively minister to people because the way you look, Hold on. he's yeah. never once said that to me. That's always been a lie from the enemy. Amen. And, um, there are seasons where I have just fully bought into that lie. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's always been after 
in any of my, you know, adventures, he's always been after my heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is so important for people to understand is that it's really easy to, to get in this tunnel vision of making it all about you. And I, I have, I have really felt a conviction on that. Um, because when I am so hyper-focused on myself, um, I start getting anxious. I start uh, chaos. I start white knuckling stuff. I get angry. I get like all of these, the sin, just the, the sin just comes out in me when I am so hyper-focused on myself, but it is when I realize when I go back, I go back to that truth of him being more concerned with my heart than anything that happens on the outside. I'm on. When I go back to that truth, it brings me, <laughs> brings me back in. It's about you, but it's not about you. Mm-hmm. And we've said that before in this ministry, like it's about you because he's after mm-hmm. your heart and he wants you to be free, but it's not about you. Mm-hmm. When you get so hyper focused in on yourself you shut down all all it just like blocks you in and it becomes a very isolated and lonely and shameful place what do you do to get yourself to get off yourself <laughs> well i give it away um and what i mean by that is when i know that i have been really um really selfish. When I know that I have been operating in a really selfish place um, and my eyes haven't been on the things that, that God would, would have them on. Um, the Holy spirit really does get my attention and he tends to have me pray for people going through some of the, the very things that I have gone through. Um, he will send people my way. He will, um, just in conversation, something comes up. I don't think any of this is coincidence. I I believe wholeheartedly that the Holy Spirit is moving and active and um, nothing is coincidence. And so in in that act of of giving that away and and, um, serving others in that, um, you you stop looking so much at what's going on inside of you. Uh Uh And... um, that has happened. It's community. Community is, is huge. Yeah. Yes. Say it again for the girlies in the back. Yeah. Community. Cause the enemy wants nothing more than to isolate you. If he can get you isolated, um, like there, he can whisper those lies to you. And, and it's easier to believe when you're alone versus when you have a healthy community around you, that's willing to speak truth willing to speak in love in your life. Um, and I'm grateful for the community that I have. I'm grateful for a husband who is willing to, to say, Hey, I love you so much, but let's talk about this. You know, um, but that's hard. That's hard. Mm, but vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. What is the Lord saying that your you need for your body right now? Like, what does your body need in this season? Because four years ago, when you, you felt like that was a call. And I actually think the Lord did call. You felt like I can, yeah, Jesus, we can do this. Sure. You can do it. Everything's permissible. Exactly. Not everything's beneficial, but as long as you don't stay mastered by it, this is permissible. Yeah. Right. So you kind of got called into that and then you went on that journey with him and then you're kind of in a place where, Mm -hmm. can I ask this honest question? Has there been shame with the weight that came back? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there has been. And that I think, um, carrying that because it, and it, it goes back to fear of man. Mm. It goes back to fear of man for me as what are people going to think? I was doing really good and I was healthy and, you know, uh, and now I'm, I look this way or my body is this way or it, it doesn't yeah, there's definitely shame around it. And I think, I think it's okay to talk about it. Um, yes, ma'am. I think it's okay to talk about it. And I, I, you know, the enemy has tried to really keep me quiet about it and, and 
that's where that internal chaos and um, a lot of that anxiety comes from is because it's all just so internal, right? Like, and you make up these scenarios of this person must be thinking about me in this way. And I'm telling you, most people are not thinking about, no. <laughs> most people are not thinking about you like that. Um, and so you can almost become your own worst enemy, enemy. Uh, when you're, when you're isolated like that. Again, the importance of, of community. Confession. Um, Community. And confession, yeah, and yeah. vulnerability. Yeah. There's so much power in it. There's so there's so much healing, yeah. um, healing in it when you can when you can surround one another in the love Man, of God. That's something that I feel at Revelation Wellness. We're trying to continue to cultivate in a very fractured world. Yeah, everyone's attention is here and there, and not, we how do we get people to come in and connect and confess? and mm. realize my body is hurting my it's, it's not about my weight but man i feel grief man i feel shame man i'm i am manifesting this in a way in my life i'm not mothering like i want to i'm not <laughs> yes wifing like i want to like uh, that requires community i can yeah. say that to the lord all day long and we can have our little one on one you know confessional but mm -hmm. I, there's something i think more than ever that the enemy is killing us with is the fact that we don't have connection to other people where we can walk in confessional yeah. community together. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think that there is this, this place that we come to where we're holding this tension of, of healing that has happened and this tension of the healing that has yet to come. Amen. And that is, uh, is this place that I have found myself in a lot in the last few years of just this, I, it's like, I know all the, I know the truth. I know the real truth. And I, I, I have experienced freedom. I have experienced his healing. I have experienced yeah. his goodness, but yet there's still something over here that he's after. And so it's just that, that tension, oh, and it's so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. And you almost get yourself to a point where you're like, even afraid to, to talk about it because you don't want, um, you don't want to come across as though you're not as free as you thought you were, you know, yeah. like it's a total, that's totally real fear. Like, and I even struggled with that a little bit when I was on the, on our, um, on a program. And as I was just like, am I really am I as free as I think I am if I'm using this? And then I would have moments where I'm like, yeah, I feel so good that I'm definitely free, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but then having, um, you know, the second round look the way that it did, it it definitely didn't feel like freedom for me. Um, a lot of highs and a lot of lows. And so there there is something to be said about being in that place where it's like, yeah, plans are good. God is greater. Yeah. Plans are good, but God is greater. Our, yeah. you know, my, my seeking and, um, in my obedience of seeking out the discipline, I do believe the Lord met me in those places. Absolutely. Really sweet time. And there were things in me that he did heal and that he gave me a voice to speak about that. I never thought I would ever have, but then also, you know, there, there were also the, the lower, harder times where I was like, this this is not what you had for me. And then I question like, was I ever free or was I, yeah, ever, yeah. you know, so such a tension, such a tension. We had that conversation in our little Voxer. It's, I think it's my longest Voxer ever with anyone. We went back and forth. It was <laughs> good. Did. I was like, no, keep going, keep going. That's when we said, we're going to, we're going to make a mm. podcast of this, but it was this thought or perspective that I can lose my freedom. And, and even in what we say in the ministry, get free, stay free, set others free. And sometimes staying free sounds like, oh, if I don't stay free, I've lost something. Yeah. And I was trying to, I was trying, I think we need to reframe that to you are free. You're at this level of free. There's freedom, but there's always another stage. There's always yeah. more to there's go to. So you, you don't go backwards. It's not, oh, I lost freedom. No, I'm, I have, God has revealed himself to the moments to get me to this place where I have this mm -hmm. level of freedom because who is free is free indeed in Christ, right? If he yeah. sets free, you're free. You can't yeah. lose your freedom, 
but there's another another level to go. There's another journey to go on. There's more to see. This is why Paul prays, I pray you'd have the strength to comprehend the height, the depth, the width. His love is so big and he's going after our hearts, but we're so focused on our bodies. And that's why it didn't work the second time (laughs) because you were focused on your body. You went because you thought your body was failing you, Mm -hmm. right? You went first freely with him. Like, yeah, beloved, let's go. We can do this. Here's a guideline. But when the second time was in an obsessive yes. posture, right, yes. that it'll backfire. And so I think, I guess, you know, people are like, okay, so what's the answer to this, Elisa? <laughs> oh, boy. What, what, would, what would you say to that? <laughs> Probably not going to like my answer. <laughs> say it. Um, this to me, this is a very personal this is a very personal thing that you have to take to the Lord and yeah. not everybody is going to be in the same season. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's one thing that the Lord has revealed to me in this is um, you had asked me, what does your body need in this season? And my body yeah. needs kindness. Hey, my body needs kindness and acceptance and to be met not with condemnation and not with shame. Come on, girl. Amen. That our bodies are incredible. They yeah. are they are such an incredible and smart design by God. And yeah. we are I say we, there's so many of us out there that um we can be so mean and hateful to ourselves. Mm-hmm. We can turn around and, and give away what somebody else needs. We can give them that and be kind to them and show them kindness. But then we turn around and we hate ourselves. And, um, I I just, I think the answer is, is in your, in your seeking of the Lord. Like, what is he truly asking you? What does he want from you? Are you being Mm. called into a season of discipline or a a season where he's asking you, Hey, let's get some of this noise out of the way and let's get, get close to him. Um, is, is he calling you into that? And if he is, there's no judgment. There, there's right. no, there's no judgment. There's no shame. Like, and walk- if he is, and go, like, if <laughs> yes, you're because- a follower of Christ. Yes. If there's something over there for you that he is Amen. leading you and he's inviting you into. Yeah. Go. Yes. I love that. Just go. go uh, yeah. But if he's calling you into, into a season of like, Hey, let's take, let's take a step back and get some perspective. Amen. Can we evaluate the things that are going on inside of you? That's mm-hmm. going on in your home. What, what are, I'll tell you this, when you start digging deeper into your pain and into the past situations that have gotten you to where you are today, he will reveal to you the root of why you hate yourself so much. Mm. He will reveal it to you. Mm. And he's so kind to do it. And it's not in a way of, okay, well, now you got to fix it. No, he wants to shepherd you in that. He wants to be your shepherd in it. And so many times we want to just jump ahead of the shepherd. I just had a conversation with my mom about that. Of We we get in these times, whether it be times of neglect or times of obsession, whichever one it is for you. That's right. We want to jump and, and we want to just go past the shepherd. And he's like, hey, wait, <laughs> wait, I am gentle and I am kind. Mm. meekness doesn't equal weakness. Mm -hmm. And, and so, um, learn of me. (laughs) And when you learn something, you, you're so, um, there's so many things firing off in you when you are learning something, but you have to stay close to the source because if you start pulling away from the source and getting ahead of the shepherd, then you're going to find yourself in a white knuckling, uh, really anxious place that he never intended for you, but isn't he so kind to say, Hey, I'm still here. You can still bring that thing to me. Come on. Still keep bringing that thing to me. The thing that you think is going to be your end, just keep bringing it to me. You don't have to take it everywhere else, but just keep bringing it to me. Yeah. Yeah. No good. I think I want to just encourage the person who's listening who maybe you were thinking about 
narrowing, you're feeling the call into the narrow, um, go. Like we, that's what we're saying, go. And stay close to his heart yes. because he's not calling you to go lose weight. Mm. I'm going to say it again. He is not calling you to go lose weight. He is saying, you come with me and I'm going to show you more of your heart. Yes. And that's why we have to hold it very loosely Yes, because you have to be able to ask yourself, am I willing to go on this, this call of, I feel like he's saying, narrow the gates, come mm. in closer to me. If it means I get more of his heart, mm. then I go. If it means that I get my weight loss or my strength gain or my six pack abs or whatever the thing you're wanting, just be aware that can flare up and show, and that will take you from his heart. Yeah. And if you go that way, he's kind enough to then mm -hmm. stop the thing from working, right? Like he'll stop it because yes. it was never about the thing you made it about. We just said it's Amen. all about you and him. He wants you to remain and abide and be in him. And apart from him, you can do mm -hmm. nothing. But with him, you can try this. We could go down that journey. We can see what's there. It is more in therapy world. They call this the curiosity. Mm -hmm. Go in curiosity. Go to get curious about who God is, who you are in relationship. Not curious about, can someone please hand me the formula to my life so that I never have to deal with food Preach. noise again. And that's the thing that I'm, I just really get concerned about back to the time of the magic mm -hmm. bullet. Um, yeah, it's, it's possible now to just say, I'm never going to have food noise again. Um, and I'll just, that'll be better. Right. Um, that'll be better. But then you do realize the food noise has everything to do about desire. Like it's, yeah. it's a des desire and God is the God of desire. And so he, you can dumb down your desire, uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, minimize it, but it's always going to come back and flow in seasons. Cause that's who God is. God sometimes yeah. just burns really bright for us to go do this, go do that. It's hot seasons of life, but it's this being aware that it's God's going to pull you in and out of that thing, which is why 97%, well, to some extent, 97% of diets don't work because in the world without Jesus, it's exhausting. Yeah. It's just dang right exhausting. It feels good for the moment, but it can't be sustained. And even as a follower of Christ, 97% of diets will fail or programs fail if we think we're going to stay on that for the rest of our life. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, and I think that's where you and I came back. I'm like, how do we, how do we help people to encourage them to go wherever Christ is going? But then in the end, because back to just practically the program you were on, it kind of touts the fact that, Hey, we're going to help you. You won't have to be on this forever. We're going to help right. your mindset. We're going to help all these things so that you can get off of it. Mm -hmm. But my question to you, I said, do people actually get off of it? Mm. And it's yeah. Yeah, I have, I mean, I, I know some people who have, and I know some who haven't. Um, and so I, I don't know, I can't say, um, and when I say they have, it's been longer than like three months or six months. It's been, it's been years that, that they yeah. have maintained. Um, but I have also witnessed people who like me, who, who yeah. tried and tried, um, and, and, and I want to say this too, uh, um, it all comes back down to the motive of your heart and, um, the season of life that you're in. And, um, like I said, take all things into consideration and don't be so quick to judge be harsh and judgmental towards yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I it, like truly put those thoughts on trial before the Lord. Um, mm -hmm. but sustainability. Um, he keeps calling me back to bringing it back to him. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ashley. <laughs> I just, listen, I wish I could get on here and be like, guys, I figured it out. Like <laughs> I got it. <laughs> okay. 
you can't we would bottle that up and millionaires and sell it like i figured it no no and i was so nervous to come and have this conversation that was like the where the enemy was like yeah but you don't have this figured out like you're oh still much in that messy middle place and like you shouldn't be talking about this and I'm like, oh, shoot. that's why you <laughs> should be talking. That's why you should be. Everyone, you're, I'm going to put Ashley's Instagram in the notes here. Go over there and tell her what a weapon of mass destruction to the enemy she has been today, because this is exactly what needs to be talked about. This mm -hmm. is where people are. They're not, I've arrived. And let me tell you the formula how to get there. Because mm. hear me, people, this is why another reason why we want to have this conversation is, yes, Ashley fits more of the mold of the neglector. I fit yeah. more of the mold of the obsessor. So, hey, I figured out my body. And again, yeah. food noise has never been a thing. It's not generationally something that I know you said your family. It's mm -hmm. been something for you guys. Yeah. So, right. There's just that's stuff for me. Yeah. Not so much. But for me, oh, my gosh, where am I not free? Who? Uh, in the way I want to control things in the ministry, in my marriage, in my children, it is a addiction to want to pick yeah. up the thing again and do it in my strength and completely forget grace, completely yeah. forget that everything is dependent upon grace. Mm. This, the fact that we're breathing right now is just mm. grace. Yeah. So I have a lot of growing to do in my freedom, um, but yeah, in a society where looks tend to matter, it's a great way that the enemy shames us, which is why yeah. Revelation Wellness, we're like, get in this community, yeah. get involved, get known and be known and go out and preach the gospel, even if you don't believe it. And the going is the healing yes. in many ways. Amen. That tension of holding the healing that has come and the healing that is coming is coming. Amen. The freedom that has come and the freedom that is coming. And there yes. is no going back. I'm going to read from first Samuel 16, seven, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at, the heart. Amen. His eyes are always transfixed on our hearts. It's yeah. the thing. It's the literally biblical definition means the center of everything, mm. the center of who you are, what you want, what you desire, even what you think about, even what you send towards your things. Yeah. That you, 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 again, so I guard your heart because that thing will find itself in weird places. Yeah. But he wants that heart. And that's where I'd say everything is permissible. The tools, okay. But how is it in your going with God's heart and yeah. staying with his heart? Yeah. Man, I'm I'm in that season of Stay. I mean, you know, stuff going on in the ministry right now. I I could freak out, but the Lord is like, the Lord keeps doing this with me, Ashley. And this might speak to someone. Oh, you have to see us on Instagram or video wherever we are. Exactly. I run ahead. The shepherd, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, and I'm gone. And and I just have this vision of the Lord in his, in his robe, in his majesty. And he sees me out in front and he just grabs me and he kind of pushes me aside, like, get out of my way. Like, <laughs> you're in my way. And he'll scoop his hand. And then all of a sudden, there's just, and he puts me mm -hmm. in his heart. Mm -hmm. So he scoops, get out and get in. Get Amen. out of the way and get in me. Yeah. That's a good word. What else would you want them to know? Your last closing words for people that are listening to you. Hmm. Not like your last closing words, not like you're dying, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> your final words. What do you have to say? I think um, we do, we do live in a very noisy culture. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that the Lord really does want to do a deeper work in his bride. Yeah. And that deeper work requires us to lay some stuff down. And, um, you may have to continually lay that thing down, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. um, his heart's desire is that you would come to him. And like you said, 
in he wants to yeah, you get in me yeah because when you are in him you will learn who he you will learn who you are amen you will learn who he's created you to be um and when you are listening to the voices of whatever social media channel that you're on or accounts that you follow or you know um it's it's very noisy it's very real um when you get distracted by the glamorous side of things um Mm -hmm. i would just want to encourage you to instead of taking it from this this viewpoint of of shame and judgment on yourself I believe the Lord would really want you to look at yourself through the lens of kindness mm-hmm. and grace. That's right. Oof. Um, and, and it's not going to, it's not going to be the easiest thing you've ever done because like I said, we can be our own worst enemy. We can be terrible to ourselves yeah. and we can write out the list of things that we wow. know. And, um, but I, I just, I believe that God sees us a lot differently than how we view ourselves. So, um, keep taking that thing to him, keep taking it to him again. again, If if he is not exhausted by you, yeah, he's not exhausted by you. And I think I needed to hear that he's not exhausted by me. I'm in this cycle again. He must be no, actually he's not. He wishes I would just calm my pants down, (laughs) get over here and just come in. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um but yeah don't be so hard on yourself amen Think amen the first i think i'm going to close with some practicals because I, I, I you spoke right to our heart and if we've we've done that but practically everyone there is a war for your attention and your affection there is a yes. war and listen we want a little bit of that war right now we just got almost an hour of your time uh we hope it has blessed you, edified you, and built you up in the things of Christ, because that is good investment of time. Be careful with what you are doing throughout the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. What are your eyes looking at? Yeah. What are you consuming? What are you seeing? We've never lived in more of a visually input culture than now. 4,000 to 10,000 ads a day you receive. The other thing is there's no margin. We are always on our, we're always the input all the time. Mm-hmm. Actually what's happening, this is why we can know truth up in our head. It can kind of come here for a little bit and then it's gone because we're yeah. on to the next thing. So there has to be margin in our life for followers of Jesus to be able to sit in quiet, even if it's two minutes, three minutes, five yeah. minutes before you go to bed, kids are down instead of plopping on the couch. And looking at more out. input and scrolling to feel good for a dopamine hit, you're going to have to get after that quiet space where you are getting in him. You're actually like, yeah. I am just going to sit here and be with you. I was reading a book by John Mark Comer. It's coming. I, I'm fortunate to get an early release of it. It's insanely good, but I can't remember who he quoted. There was some theologian that said this verse that real simply to be with Jesus means this. I look at him, he looks at me, and we're happy. Oof. Wow. I then I do you have times in your day. Just I look at him, he looks at me, and we're happy. We're married. We are one. Mm. Um, we need more of that. So we talk about it all day long. Get in him, get in him. But my closing thoughts to all of you who are like, you you don't want to get sucked into something where you're gone and mastered by it. You're not even sure if you should start something. Maybe, maybe not. Would you just sit down before you say yes or no and get in him? And if you find yourself starting to get obsessive about it or the Mm -hmm. thing, would you just sit down, look at him, looking at you and wait until you can find that happiness of him. Other than that, I feel like we're losing, we're, we're, we're facing a giant of modern yeah. technology and, and all the inputs and things selling us. We're just tossed to and fro yeah. until we find silence in him and find that practice again. Mm. So, Hey, we have these things called be still and be loves too. Those are pretty amazing for people that yes. just need to sit, but I, I love good silence. And have you heard about the book, the body revelation? <laughs> have I heard about it? 
<laughs> we heard. I just got to say that in closing, I would encourage anyone who is considering another thing or trying something, just go through that book first. It, it is about, let's put the thing over here, the body, everything that we've made it about and just heal through yeah. kindness, through what God is wanting, through your story, looking at how some of this stuff you've dragged into this season of life that you're in that he's yeah. like yeah i want to get after those things and yeah. then go on whatever journey with him whatever that might be yeah um i love you ashley well i love you there might thank people. you thank you for just giving um this conversation a space to be heard I think you're. i think you're gonna be back I think we're going to just do, you'll speak for the neglectors and I'll do the obsessors yeah. and we'll just kind of go after this for a it's bit. It's a beautiful so you, picture. It's it a beautiful is a beautiful picture. picture. It? Uh-huh. It is. The world yeah. would tell us, no, that's not right. Does, but in sense. the kingdom, it makes total sense. It's perfect sense. That's why I miss being at retreat with you and we would be on stage, be know. in class, teach classes together. Always made yes. me happy to look over at Ashley. Makes me so happy. All right. Well, you guys do um, leave comments and uh, we've got Ashley's Instagram. If you want to connect with her more, um, let us know if you want to have, if you have more questions in this tension of how do we stay free, not worry about losing our freedom. That's not possible, but still gain more and more freedom as we go. Yeah. All right, girl. Love you much. I'll Love see you, you on a staff call. All the like, places. All the places. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Love you. Love you awesome. Too. Thanks for watching. And remember, this video was brought to you by Revelation Wellness Instructor Training Program. Do you love Jesus and have a passion for fitness and wellness? Or maybe you're tired of the roller coaster of obsessing over and neglecting your body, and you know there has to be more to fitness. Let us equip you to lead others to health and wholeness rooted in Jesus Christ through our faith-based fitness instructor training program. Go to our website to learn more and listen to testimonies of people just like you who are bringing hope and healing to their communities as fitness teacher gospel preachers. Click the link in the description of this video and download a packet to get your journey to health and wholeness through Christ started today.